started GitHub just before COVID. In February, started the GitHub. One month later, everybody was sent home. And I was working at home since, since then. Never went back to office. Um, before that, I worked actually for Atlassian's partner for like 15 years. The Jira Confluence, all that stuff. Done that. I, in my early life, I did some development as well, but that didn't last long, probably about a year or two, that's it. So I was born in Ukraine, so that's where the accent from. I lived in China for a while, did my degree in China, um, moved to Korea, worked in Korea for a few years, and then moved to Australia. So yeah, a lot of people say I'm a spy. Um, <laughs> that's what I do on weekends, that's what he was referring to. Um, I fly gliders, that's Richmond. But so yeah, that's not my glider. I borrowed it, but that's what I had in my driveway the yeah. other weekend. It's a great sport, so if you're interested, let me know. Uh, so, this is the agenda, and we haven't covered the first topic yet. Yes, really. The pizza. Yeah. We have to cover the first topic. <laughs> it's like pierogi. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we will have to cover this one a bit later. So, what I want to talk about, show you today is code spaces. Um, I'll show you compilers, what, what it is, you'll get the idea. Plenty of uh, time for Q&A later, and hopefully we will get to beer at some point. Oh, you already got to beer. Okay, fine. Okay, let's start with code spaces. How many people are developers here or write software? Okay, good, good. How many times have you had a, chair, a case where somebody comes to you and says, it doesn't work, and you're like, whoa, it works in my machine? Obviously not, it's your problem, right? So it happens all the time, all freaking time. You have some development dependency installed, which the other guy doesn't. It works for you, it doesn't work for them. And you, you, you spend hours trying to figure out or you get a new guy or girl on your project, you say, here's your new laptop, set it up. How much time does it take them to set up the whole environment? I've been told between one to five days, right? That's about the average. So that's one to five days of time pretty much wasted by setting everything up. And then you tell them, oh, by the way, it's on week three, we need to move you to another project. <laughs> there goes another five days wasted, right? So that's pretty much one of the problems that we try to address with code spaces. You have all these questions like, well, I, hold, I lost five days setting up one guy, or I need 16 core CPU tomorrow because I need to test this application and I have only four. Can you buy me 16 core CPU machine, right? Um, and the last one is, yeah, of course. Um, I will not go through that, but I will not go through that. It's all the sales stuff. But in a shell, nutshell, what code space is, let's see. Do I have, yes. What code space is, think about your laptop in a cloud. Not just laptop, your development environment. So you work in Visual Studio Code, Instead of starting it on your laptop, it has somewhere, it, it sits in a cloud environment. But it's more than just a VM somewhere in Azure or Google. It's not more than that. The idea about code spaces is it's laptop which is already configured with configuration living in your GitHub repository. So the next time you, you set it up, yeah, you spend five days to set it up. But once you've configured all that, the next developer who starts, they start code space, everything already there. Everything you need to develop in that project, you already have it all configured in your repository. If tomorrow you find that there is another tool that needs to be added, you reconfigure it from tomorrow onwards, every new person starting on that project will get that tool already installed. You don't waste five days anymore. Okay, so let me show you how it actually works. Now, here comes the, uh, my usual disclaimer. This is a live demo. Expect something not to work. I, if, it, every, if everything works, I've done something wrong. <laughs> so, 
I have a repository here, right? Um, how many people seen GitHub before? Yes. Huh? Yes, and I think it's option plus. No, command plus. Yes. Command plus. Does it work? Okay, sweet. Ignore what it is. We're not going to write code, trust me. I'm not a developer. <laughs> Don't put me on development projects. It will be worse than five days. Um, so you have a repository, your GitHub repository somewhere, those who work with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, no, it's pretty much more or less the same, uh, different colors, right? Usually what developers would do is they, if they need to work with this repository, they would go and say, okay, grab this, go to terminal, git clone, put this, clone repository, open in my Visual Studio code, start cranking code, commit to my local repository, occasionally push back to GitHub, right? With code spaces, the idea is slightly different. Now watch how much time it will take. I've clicked the button. Um, so what I'm doing you now, showing you now is your new developer just started on a project. You're brand new without any dependencies configured. That's what they will do. They will start code space. Oh, wait. Where did my five days go? I've just started the code space, it took what, a few seconds? Well, I don't know why, something wrong, because that's faster than I expected. <laughs> usually it takes about two minutes or so. Um, uh, sometimes it's faster, but usually about one to two minutes, so that was really fast, something, something's wrong here. But you have ever seen already all, any extensions that you have configured before, they're already running here, they're already installed. All the tools that you had to install in your environment, they already installed. Everything is here. I can go and, oh wait, it's still running npm install. Okay, I'll wait for that. But once it's finished, again, I can start my application and actually see how it looks as if it was on my laptop. But the actual computer is somewhere in some Azure VM, somewhere there. Um, so I can do npm, I think it's start. Okay, it's running. So I started my application. Sorry, you might not be able to see that. Is that better? Okay. So I started it. I can actually take that and I can create a port. It's running on 3000. I'll set up a port and boom, just as if it's running on my laptop. I can open the application, I can play with it. Three minus six, and it even gives me right results. So again, all that is a browser. So now imagine um, what I'm telling developers will hate this, but what I'm telling managers and like, look guys, if you worry about um, the cost of all your laptops, like each laptop is like what's between three to seven thousand bucks, depending on specs, right? How much is Chromebook? Eight hundred bucks? You can give everybody Chromebook because the computing power is in the cloud. Developer will hate you, but if you're desperate to cut cost, it, it is an option. So it's running on the server. It's it's not on my laptop. Oh, okay. You wow. see, it's all I am accessing it by a browser. In fact, in fact, if I change this, so for example, if I change this to public, and I send you that URL, you will be able to open it as well. So it's all running somewhere, not on my laptop. On my laptop, I only have a browser. So it's, I only use browser to connect to everything. What's more, I don't know, I haven't played with it much, but, I do know that I can take my Visual Studio code and connect it to that code space. So instead of using browser, I will use my Visual Studio code as a client, but the computing is still all done on, on somewhere else in the cloud. So same, um, same idea with uh, Chromebook like will apply. So maybe not Chromebooks, but you don't have to issue anybody 16 core CPU machines anymore. Um, you can give them whatever is basic needed to run browser, to run basic 
program in, but anything that requires very hardcore uh, development, you can just start cold space. With cold space, just like with all the cloud stuff, you only pay for what you use. So you start code space, you use it for five hours, you shut it down, you pay for five hours, which will cost you a few cents, right? How much is new 32 core CPU machine? Probably 10 grand. Even running it on GPUs, everything costs a few cents for five hours. We, there is no GPU option yet. Oh. So it's something that is coming, uh, but the options for 16 32 core CPUs is, is an option there. Like for example, if I go to my here and I want to create a new code space, I just clicked on that button that created sort of a default machine with default settings. But I could go and create machine with different options. And I can say, okay, give me 16 core machine. Or give me eight, eight core, I don't know. My, uh, I think in my organization I disabled 32 core. But you can have 32 core CPU here. Actually, hold my beer. Let me pull up something which might have uh, more. I'll steal somebody's, oh, that's template. I'll steal somebody's repository and see if I can show you better options. Yep, so you see here, there is such a core CPU machine. I can, I can technically do that. So a good example here is um, usually you don't need more than two core or four core machine, but twice a month you need to run some test which requires 32 core and it runs for four hours. So without this, you still have to buy 32 core CPU machine either to everybody or at least one which sits in a drawer which you will use twice a month just for that testing, right? It sits there doing nothing other than twice a month. Instead, what you do is you come here, you spin off such two core CPU machines, start your testing, four, months, four hours later you shut it down, you pay, what, half a dollar for whatever it, it costs to run such two core CPU machine. Mm -hmm. And that's it versus 10 grand sitting in the drawer, right? So your uh, capital expenditure, expenditure drops, you just pay tax when you need it. So that's one. Oh, another good feature of code spaces. Other than region, yeah, that's already everybody knows it's possible. This one. Remember I said configuration is actually stored in repository. So if I want to install another tool, the configuration to adds a tool into every new code space is part of settings in the repository. I can create multiple configurations. So for example, I have a project and I have QA engineers, I have developers, I have security folks, um, type of people. And all three of these, these three types, they all use different tools. So if I have a security folk, people who were developers in the past and I suddenly need a developer for a couple of weeks, I can pull them in, but that will be five days for them installing all the environment, right? What I can do, I can create three different configurations. I can create one config for QA, test uh, one configuration for developer, one configuration for security person. So if security folk needs to jump into development, all they have to do is just code, start code space with development configuration, all the development tools will pop up and he will be able to do the job. Once he finished, shut it down, spin off his security one with all the security tools to allow him to do the testing and uh, um, pen testing and all that stuff. So you can create multiple ones. Um, with the one I've opened, that one, I'll close it, let's see. And here it's just like your normal VS code. I can go and I can modify files. So I can go, I don't know where it is. I think it's in, is it here? Yeah. So I can do some nasty stuff and I can do, hey, minus, plus, and start it again. 
and suddenly, just like in my normal laptop, if I modify something, I'll start it and I do six plus three. Uh-huh, you see, so I just messed it up. Oh, That's no. correct, six, six divided over three. three. Minus, okay, six minus three. Yeah. No, okay, let me... <laughs> okay, six, let's say, plus, plus three. Three, right? You didn't. Be, you don't believe me, right? That's fine. Nine plus eight. You see, so just like a normal machine, you go modify, start it, it works. Uh, but this time it's just in the browser. Um, what else is here? Um, this is more. So what I showed you is really from developer perspective, but. How many people here are in management? Uh huh. So, you with GitHub code spaces, you can apply settings not just on the man on overall level. Like, remember, have you seen such a tool was grayed out? Mm -hmm. Because somebody on an organization level went and said, only allow four to sixteen cores. Administrator, manager. Yep. Yeah. Don't allow such a tool. Or they can go and say, allow Southeast Asia and allow US East. Don't allow other regions because, I don't know, we don't trust them or it's more expensive, whatever the reason is, right? So you can do these things. Or don't allow code spaces at all. I don't want to play with this cost, which I don't know how much I will end up paying at the end of the month. You can do that at all. So on top of that, on management level, probably it's more for your IT folks. You can audit everything, who, who's done what, who has access. I won't, I won't bore you with that. So again, on org level, you can define a uh, number of CPUs. Remember I, I started to open the port to see the application? Yeah. I can apply three different type of visibility settings to it. By default, it's private, so only I can see it. But I cannot also apply, apply private to organization. So if we work, we are in the same organization in GitHub, you will be able to see that uh, applications that I'm running as well. Or I can make it public. So everybody, in my customer demos when I'm on a call, sometimes when I have time, I actually make it public. I uh, send uh, a text with URL, and I tell them to open it. So they open like, um, ah, that one is interesting. Um, so with code space, um, you started, as soon as you started, it starts charging you per minute, right? If developer goes away for an hour or two or three and then come back, we don't want to, you to pay for the time when it's sitting there doing nothing. So we actually have 30 minute default timeout. You can modify it. But we have 30 minutes timeout. So if for 30 minutes we do not detect any activity in that code space, we will shut it down. 